1949, the year before his death, George Orwell came out with his masterpiece, 1984, which went on to sell millions, become required reading for students, and be considered by many a must-read classic. So in this video, I'm going to talk about who George Orwell was, what his work 1984 is about, and why it's considered a masterpiece. But before I begin, I want to say thanks for watching Ben Explains with your host, Ben. And if you want to watch more videos where I explain things, click that subscribe button down below. Now let's begin. In order to fully understand 1984, we need to first understand why the author wrote it. Eric Arthur Blair, better known by his pen name George Orwell, was born to English parents in India in 1903. Blair's father was a minor British officer in India. After briefly living in India, Blair was sent to England to attend a boarding school where he was surrounded by other upper-class Englishmen. He went on to attend college at a prestigious school at Eton. Following college, he joined the Indian Imperial Police in Burma, where he witnessed firsthand how oppressed the Burmese people were. He saw the injustices of a social and caste system and how unwilling the Burmese were to be ruled by the English. Blair became ashamed of his role and resigned in 1927. After Burma, Blair renounced his title and lived amongst the poor and underprivileged. He spent his time between London and Paris, taking a job washing dishes. He declared himself a democratic socialist and opposed oppressive governments and advocated equality. In the 1930s, during the Spanish Civil War, Blair moved to Spain and fought against the communists until he was forced to flee in 1937. During World War II, Blair worked for the BBC in India and wrote as a journalist for the left-wing papers. During the 1930s and 40s, Blair came out with several books, but most notably Animal Farm and 1984. Blair wrote 1984 on the Scottish island of Jura, away from the distractions of big city life. As he was writing the book, he was battling tuberculosis, which eventually took his life shortly after the book was published. Now that we understand the author, Let's get into a brief summary of the book 1984, and yes, there will be spoilers, so this is your warning. The opening line of the novel is, it was a cold day in April, and the clock was striking 13. Our protagonist, Winston Smith, lives in a dystopian future where you are always being watched by the all-powerful Big Brother, the leader and eternal head of the party whose slogan is, war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Winston lives in Airstrip 1, which is a part of the nation Oceania, one of the three nations constantly fighting over power. The other two are East Asia and Eurasia. Oceania is, has a form of caste system. There is the elite inner party, the outer party, where Winston finds himself, and the proles, the lowest class, which makes up the vast majority of the population. The party tries to control every aspect of life, trying to eliminate any sense of individualism from the party. They even go as far as to strategically change the language in an attempt to control people's thoughts, making the idea of rebellion or thoughts of crime against the party almost impossible because one's language can't support such ideas. The party changes records and history so they are always correct. Orwell writes, The past is whatever the records and the memories agree upon, and since the party is in full control of all records, and in equally full control of the minds of its members, it follows that the past is whatever the party chooses to make it. If you do something against the party, even thinking negative thoughts towards the party, referred to as thought crime, you can be put to death. You will either be secretly taken and erased from the records or forced to confess your crimes publicly before being killed. Winston lives a sad, lonely life and begins to experience thought crimes and starts a diary, which is absolutely illegal in Airstrip 1. He then gets slipped a note from a young, attractive woman named Julia, saying that she loves him. And they continue to meet in secret and talk about how they hate Big Brother and the party, and they become lovers. Orwell writes, their embrace had been a battle, the climax of victory. It was a blow against the party. It was a political act. The story goes on like that for a time until... Winston gets invited to O'Brien's house, an inner party member who Winston feels he can trust and confesses everything. O'Brien listens, tells Winston there is a resistance and he gives him a book written by Goldstein, the person in charge of the rebellion against Big Brother. 
When Winston finishes the book, he and Julia are arrested by O'Brien, who is just pretending to be sympathetic to Winston and is actually the person in charge of inflicting Winston's punishment. Winston is tortured and eventually gives in to the party, truly believing when they tell him two plus two equals five. He even renounces his love for Julia and wishes punishments to be done on her rather than him. All of this just so the party can enforce its power. He is eventually killed after he confesses, with the final lines of the book being, But it was all right. Everything was all right. The struggle was finished. He had won victory over himself. He loved Big Brother. But what makes this book a masterpiece? Well, for starters, it's written brilliantly. Orwell writes with a brilliant use of prose and uses dark and oppressive language throughout the entire book to convey a consistent tone. Take this line, for example. Power is not a means, it is an end. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes a revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. The objective of persecution is persecution. The objective of torture is torture. The objective of power is power. Now you begin to understand. You can tell if the story is truly great if it stands the test of time, which 1984 absolutely does. And it does in part to a few things. The first is that it has a simple theme of the importance of freedom and a warning against absolute power, which both are just as relevant today as they were in 1949. Orwell writes about people being constantly monitored, which is very applicable today as we are always in front of some sort of screen or in view of some camera. George Orwell spent his whole life studying, observing, and fighting against oppressive governments. And he took his real world knowledge and rather than making a research paper, applied it in an accessible way in 1984. That's why the party is so realistic and still holds up because it is based in reality and real forms of oppression he saw in the world. And that is why 1984 is George Orwell's masterpiece. Thank you for watching Ben Explains. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and comment any questions or suggestions for future videos down below. And always hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this.